who is your favorite person that you've blown on your way to the top? My husband. Your husband. Well, you blew him in all different kinds of ways. (laughs) My favorite person I've ever blown out their hair. (laughs) Uh, I would say, God, there's so many. I'd say like a moment that stands out for me was doing Gwen Stefani for the cover of Vogue. That was that's, that's a good one. I'm sure that's in the book. That was pretty cool. I'm sure we get to get the juice on all of that. How many secrets have you heard? Uh, <laughs> you know, should all the I secrets. just break the NDAs? Yeah. Right now. I'm sure. I'm sure. Like I was thinking of when we were talking to Carl, I was like, she probably has heard all of the juicy secrets. How much money do you guys have for legal fees? <laughs> not a lot. Not a lot. You're going to be on your own. do this. I want to go all the way back to when you were little. Did you always know that you wanted to do what you do and be an entrepreneur and do hair? I was always obsessed with makeover scenes and movies. Like, I, well, first of all, I grew up in a religious, like Mormon community and like everyone watched Disney movies. My parents never watched rated R movies. Like we didn't hear swear words and music, like nothing. But I remember like being so not into the Bible and Book of Mormon and being so into pop culture. Like I had to have like posters on my wall and I just loved the idea of like glam, like Madonna Vogue and like George Michael's like, you know, faith video or or freedom. Like I just like loved pop culture so much. So I always wanted to be a creative. I had no idea that you could actually like make a living doing hair. So when did you realize, oh shit, like I'm going to beauty school, I'm going to do hair and make a living? When I took that leap of faith and moved to LA in 2000 with my best friend, we like Romy and Michelle did up. It was very Britney Spears crossroads. We left like our Mormon community and moved to LA not knowing anyone. And I scored this insane job being a receptionist at a salon called Estilo that's still on Beverly and Martell. And I was like just learning the ways of the world. I was like, wait, there's gay men? They just want to like dance with me and hang out with me but not have sex with me? This is awesome. And I remember like feeding Bette Midler and Stevie Nicks meters and just being like, where am I? This is crazy. And then that's when I really like got to dive into the hairstyling like world. When you grow up Mormon and then you move to L.A. and have the contrast between like, you know, what L.A. is com- and compared to where you came from, like, what does that do to the psyche in the beginning? Like, are you like, what the hell's going on? Are you like, is there a lot to figure out or like, how, how did that manifest itself? Yeah, I felt like Encino Man. Like, I fully remember just being so eyes open wide. It's like different worlds. Completely. Yeah. yeah. I was like, you know, it's like going from Donnie Osmond show to... You know, at the time, God, I'm trying to think in 2000, like what was all the rage? I just remember like Sunset being so exciting, you know, and like Hollywood was like, was Perez Hilton out in 2000? Yeah. I remember like being obsessed like Perez Hilton, Pink is the New Blog and like, you know, just everything about LA was brand new and so exciting. When did like things start to take off for you, the momentum? Well, here's here's my timeline. Assisted in... 2004 to like 2007, then went on my own in the salon, working at Chris McMillan salon. And then from there, I was like, okay, I have a steady business in the salon. I could just, you know, be happy and stay in the salon. But I was like, no, I want to learn how to do like editorial hair. So I started assisting again, editorial hairstylist. And then I was like, I want to go to New York Fashion Week and Paris Fashion Week. So I started assisting on those shows. And, you know, all those things, led me to like celebrity hairstyling and and kind of I, I I just grabbed little tidbits from each world and like that kind of created my my like style of doing hair. I'm sure this is in the book, but who was the first celebrity that you did? And what was the experience like? So my first celebrity clients, I was doing extensions in like 2008. And Nicole Richie tells the funniest story. She's like, you came into my house and you were, you were doing extensions. And at the time, it really took a long time. It was like a five-hour process. And she says that halfway through, she, you know, she was like, oh, my God, um, this is, you know, this is hard. This is taking forever. And I was like, I know. Like, I, I <laughs> hate this. <laughs> and she's like, okay. No shit. <laughs> yeah. But um, 
Yeah, it was like Nicole Richie and Lindsay Lohan and Britney Spears were like my first clients and Misha Barton. So like that tells you kind of the time frame. You've done really well with really high profile clients. It seems like you have like such longevity with all of them. What do you think the trick is compared to other stylists or hairstylists or makeup artists that don't have that kind of longevity? I always say I don't think I'm like the best hairstylist out there. Like for sure, there's people who are more skilled in different genres than I am. Um, I think it comes down to your work ethic and I think it comes down to your loyalty and you just have to work hard and not be an asshole, really. It's hard though for a lot of people. I also think that that with hair and makeup, there's so much in people's energy, like your space that you have to also like, you, like come with good energy and good vibes because you're in someone's like area. I actually write about it in the book because one of the lessons that I really learned is like, it's not about you. The chapter is called, it's not about you. No, really, it's not about you. And being in the service industry, you know, I've seen it all. I've seen people who have gotten, you know, some exposure and pre-Instagram, like were like the hot hair people or makeup people or stylists or whatever. And I've seen people who have not been, you know, respectful to their clients or they start to like believe their own hype and think that like one of my quotes is all the hairstylists that I kind of watched in the salon. It was like they had so many clothes in their closet, no money in the bank. So I kind of saw it all. But that's one thing that I think is has has really helped to drive me to my success is being able to be in that world, but understand my role in it. I think a lot of people, like in I, almost in every industry, they make that mistake where they're like, they hit a hot moment, right? And they get some popularity and they think, oh, this is going to last forever. And I can just kind of go off on my own and do my own thing. They don't think like, okay, maybe this, like maybe I'm just in a really good year, a really good time. And and I think they end up like, a lot of people end up shooting themselves in the foot, either they blow their money or they ruin the relationships or they blow the trust. And then it's like, then you're literally back before step one. If people don't trust you, then you're done, right? Fully. Especially like, in that space. You have to learn how to like hang close to the sun, but not get burned. You yeah. know, that's a hard finesse though. It's not easy. No, it's not. It's a lot of self-awareness. It's not just like you just said, it's not just all about talent. It's about energy. It's about self-awareness. There's like, it's a very, um, it's a recipe. When I imagine people talk a lot in your field, right? Like I've just seen Lauren and when she, you know, she has people doing her hair or whatever, like like everybody talks and I feel like if you get a bad reputation, then, you know, all the, all of your clients are going to know. Right. Yeah. And you know, what's interesting is the more like books I've studied about, you know, anything that's like self-help or, or trying to better yourself. It's interesting. The scientific like knowledge behind if you are, if you're gossiping about something or talking about someone, whoever you're talking to, they associate you with whatever story you're telling. So it really is like a bad reflection on you. And so I think, yes, it feels in the time, and I actually write about this in the book as well, it feels at the time like you're bonding over something that's negative, but it really is just like tarnishing your whole, you know, reputation. So if I'm telling you like a a bad story that doesn't have to do with me, you're going to associate that story with me subconsciously. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and I always kind of like have gone by, one of my friends told me this years ago, that if somebody's talking about other people to you, they're probably talking about you to other people. A hundred percent. Or if someone tells you a secret, they're probably telling, yeah. A hundred percent. So how did you decide to start this massive company? Obviously, you were content marketing for it. You were doing hair. You're in the industry. You're a practitioner. You're an expert. How did you decide one day, okay, I want to, I want to take this to the next level and do a whole business? I think being in the right place at the right time was definitely part of my story. Um, I have so many female entrepreneur friends that we all kind of grew up together. So Jessica Alba actually is one person that I met when I was a receptionist at that salon in 2001. And, you know, it's interesting to watch, you know, her create the Honest Company. My other friends, uh, Hillary Kerr and Catherine Power started Click Media with Who What Wear. Um, and, And it's been so awesome to kind of have my clients also building their own brands at the same time. So I have been just a fly on the wall learning so much. So I felt like while I didn't go to college, I felt like I really understood social media and the power of it and how to really connect with your consumer, you know, through social media. And I loved the idea of like being a disruptive, digitally savvy, socially connected brand. And it didn't exist in the hair world. So I did my due diligence. It'd been years of, you know, I was an ambassador for different brands. I got to see what it was like working for like the big brands. And the more I researched who was behind the brands, this is before like we had brand founders that everyone knew, 
it was literally older white men who were the messaging was like making women feel bad about themselves making women feel like you know we have the solution for your problem kind of thing but it wasn't like celebrating women or talking like you would to a friend there were so many different aspects i could go on and on it came to packaging and scent and formulation all of it so i knew that i had a good idea i had to then raise capital I had to, you know, figure out kind of how to balance my successful career while I'm building this brand, while I'm sharing it all on social media. And I have to give so much kudos to my clients and friends who have supported me because, you know, without them and without without that community that supports Way, like we wouldn't have made it. I think people look at Way now and they like just assume like because it's just a, such a successful brand. They're like, oh, that it just it looks easier now than it probably was. And if you could go back a few years, like when you were formulating the idea and raising capital, what would you tell your younger self? And to that end, like there's a lot of young people that listen to the show and want to do what you, like something along the lines of what you've done. Like what would you tell them? And especially now as the landscape's changed, I tell them to buy my book. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would actually tell anybody who has a great idea to really save your money so that you can invest in that idea. Like you have to be able to put your money into it so that, you know, at the end of your journey, you feel really good about where you're at. Um, I would also say get a good lawyer. Yep. You know, like I think that's one thing. Anastasia told me that early on. She's like, get a lawyer you can afford in the early days of signing contracts. And we just saw Dave Chappelle post something on his Instagram about like his dealings with Comedy Central and Viacom. Oh, that was great, by the way. So good. And I was like, I really respected that he was being so honest about it because it's true. It's like you are going to be that person who has an idea who maybe doesn't have like the power or the clout. But if your idea hits, you're then going to be that person that has power and clout. But do you own your business? So I think it's really important for people to know that like you need to be smart with your money while you're building your business model. Yeah, cheap legal bills scare me these days. In the beginning when I was starting out, I was like, oh, I need to go with the cheap, because that's what you can afford. But when I see them now, it scares me. I'm like, what are we gonna end up paying for later tenfold, right? Totally. Like, it's much better to get a competent lawyer up front and spend the money, even if it hurts the bank in the beginning, because cleaning up is miserable. It could literally save you millions of dollars. Yes. Yeah. It's Michael used to say, like his dad's friend used to say, whenever you have a small business, run it like it's a big business. And no, that's- yeah, he, what he was saying was in the beginning, run it like it's already a big business and put the proper resources and assets in place, like legal-wise accounting, because you're going to end up having to do it later and it's going to be much more expensive and much more of a headache. And it's just a matter of if, like, not now, like how much of a headache later. Damn, where was your dad in 2015? Who <laughs> used that advice? <laughs> How's Michael's hairline? What? I want to know. Great. He thinks so too. A very <laughs> strong hairline. Thank you. I didn't, a, I didn't know that's what I, that we're was going. just a little what? plot twist. I just wanted I to know. I gotta say, he's got great hair. Yeah, he thinks so Not too. Not very many guys can pull off the longer hair stitch. I haven't. Well, it. before we we never got to meet before, but it was really short. And then this pandemic, I've just like let it let it. We roll. don't need your whole history of your hair. No, well, let's, you know. let's do it. Okay, we let's can. Do it's it. like a family tree. Start right, from stop, let's start from day one. Let's let's talk about it. I just wanted to know how you thought his hairline was. I think it's really great. And do you have product in it right now? Um, I have this stuff. He won't share it though because he doesn't want people just buy it out i have shared it then say what it is I just have, say it's way matte pomade it's it is that i'll try that let's sell it out i've been using this stuff called redkin but it's just like this like stuff. it's rough paste no 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 i used to use the rough paste on my hair because i slick it back but now i can't because it's too thick. wait maybe we should get him the pomade to try yes i actually i like to meet people in person and see what you need and i'll send it to you okay okay I'm pumped okay. it's probably better than what i'm using for sure <laughs> i'm sure it's better retail values check out way everybody <laughs> <laughs> okay so i have a selfish question Raising money as a woman is, I think, more difficult than raising money if you're a man. Just for me, my experience. Going By the way, territory here. you could go broader and say life is more difficult yes. for a woman than it is a man. Sorry. Yes. So, I agree. I saw her give birth and I was like, we could we would, we would, could never do that. You complain about a paper cut, so you can never do it. <laughs> so how did you go about doing that when you, you said, you know, you didn't graduate from college? How did you have the tools in your toolbox to do that? What did you do? Did you ask friends? What did you do? Yeah, again, um, I think watching my friends who had raised capital for their, you know, budding businesses helped give me like the confidence and guidance. I asked like some of my clients managers, you know, I actually just recently, Sofia Vergara's manager, like longtime manager, Luis Balaguar posted about my book and he was one of the first, he has pictures of me. We were flying private like in 2000 and probably 10 and me like on my computer because I was just always 
trying to kind of like keep my ideas organized and and taking notes and and I remember kind of just googling business plans or I had been sent some business plans to look at so I kind of just used that as my template and my guide and put the idea out there um and it really was just kind of like throwing sp- spaghetti at the wall to see what stuck how long from when you had the idea like walk us through the timeline you have the idea did it take you three years to develop the product so I'd say started passing around a business plan 2013 then met my investor who is incredible we started formulating and like traveling all over the US uh, to find the right like laboratories for certain products in 2014. Uh, so it took probably about a year and a half. And then we launched February 2016. I'll never forget the day. It was like February 3rd. And I remember just like my phone blowing up. So what would your advice be for someone that wants to launch a digital forward company like using social media? What are some tips and tricks that you have up your sleeve that you think have really worked? I would say this, don't be naive to the fact that like the world is watching your page. You know, like I remember when we first launched at Sephora US, I was like, oh my God, this is so exciting. And the floodgates of like, when is it coming to Australia? When will it be in Germany? Are you guys going to be in Dubai? Like it was, that was stressful for me. I was like, oh my God, now we have to like figure out how to do this globally. And Instagram is incredible because you can crowdsource with so many people everywhere you know, um, but it also complicates things. Like I had to think about like environmental, uh, you know, the environment that people live in in different parts of the country and what they would need for the hair and now their body because now we're like a full lifestyle brand. So um, I would say crowdsourcing, using the tools that Instagram has, it's such an amazing gift. Being able to t- take polls and, you know, I'll even sometimes go into my close friends and ask like which color of this jar do you like, you know, I it's so incredible to be able to to not only crowdsource, but also create focus groups. You've built the products so influencers and celebrities want them on their feed. Like they they look aesthetically pleasing. It's not something you wouldn't want on your Instagram feed. Yeah, I wouldn't say that I, I keep just influencers and celebrities in mind, but like, trust me, when I get like a text from one of my friends that's like, oh my God, this is really good. Or like they post it in their gorgeous bathrooms. I'm like, oh my God, this is great. Um, I love getting like, compliments from my picky friends too, who are like the design snobs. It's really fun. (laughs) But yeah, I think, you know, what we try to do is really just stay true to who we are as a brand, but also like learn from our followers and try to, um, we, we try to just like not do what everybody else is doing and just do us. You're very community driven, which is good. Very. Yeah. Your husband's a photographer. He's also very successful. How did you guys meet and how do you guys work together? Michael and I need all the tips for working together. Well, you guys know it's not always easy. No, it's not always easy. What? He hates working with me. We met at an Oscar party in, uh, let's see, 11 years ago through Lindsay Lohan. Okay. That old romantic love story. Wait, you met through Lindsay Lohan? She's like, you guys have to meet and set you up? He was shooting her for a campaign she had. I was at my client's Oscar party and then people on set, a mutual friend of ours and and Lindsay's at the time was like, we should go to this party. And they did. And he, I thought he was gay. And we sat and talked for hours. And I was like, cute. He said that like, I, I don't, it's funny. It wasn't love at first sight for sure. It was more like an LA combo, just like talking about work. And then uh, we just both happened to be in Paris for fashion week. I was working with John Galliano at the time. And my husband was in Paris. And so we hung out during fashion week and had like a very, it was kind of a Carrie Bradshaw moment, like had our first kiss, like with the Eiffel Tower in our peripheral vision. It was really fun. But was he, was he into you first or were you into him first? Uh, For sure. I think I got stoned and was like, are you going to kiss me? So I think I was into him first. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you guys work together now? Like, what does that look like? What's the day to day on that? Um, I torture him and he doesn't charge me. That's what it looks like. So why do you Free torture me? labor. What, really you bad. think I torture you? Yeah. Oh, you torture me horribly. She yeah. finds like little tasks for me that don't have anything. Like if I'm, if I, I only give him one task at once because I don't want to overwhelm him. That's the trick. If Just I ever one get a task moment at of once, like... and then you check that off, then you can move to the next thing. Yeah. Because if I try to put too much on Mike's plate, he for sure is like, oh, I forgot about that one yeah. thing. I was like, no. I am such a perfectionist. So when we're on set together, he hates it because I'm like, 
I love to, I'm, I like to be director and I do it even when it's not with Mike and I need to like stay in my lane sometimes, but I also know what I want to get. It, you know, it's, it's a hard process. You're a visionary. You, you have the vision in your head. Yeah. But by the way, and I'm not afraid to say this, he gets credit for so many things. Like I might have like a little bossy tip or tidbit or ask him like whisper in his ear or something and then he does it and it's like everyone's like oh my god he's so amazing that sounds familiar <laughs> yeah it sounds so familiar like you get the credit i'm scared to give you an idea because then you repackage it and my favorite is you repackage it and repurpose the idea as your own it's like giving someone a gift and then they give it to someone else Listen, and wrap I, learned it up. A, I learned a long time ago always take the credit no if you can he, he does always take the credit another I, tip from your dad yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks dad no, i don't like, know if that i don't know if that was from him but um but it's working well. That's okay, funny. how long have you guys been together? 600 years. We've known each other since we were 12. But we haven't been together that long. We've been together for like 13 years. Yeah, she's been obsessed with me for forever. Guys, I still feel the sparks between you two. That's a good thing. And we have sparks. That's good. We have sparks still. We have to in order to get through this craziness. I mean, if we didn't. A quarantine Honestly. doesn't really make you want to get on your knees and, you know... Listen, if any can get, it doesn't. Top. It yeah. doesn't. Make quarantine is. I was talking to my Pilates teacher today about this. The quarantine is not like the sexiest of situations. No, there's a global pandemic <laughs> going around and a crazy virus. It's not the most no. exciting time. Do you for know what's so funny? Connection. My friend sent me like a link to some lingerie brand. She's like, this stuff is so pretty, and I was like, I don't want to see this. I'm in like I'm still in banana bread phase. Oh, <laughs> like I don't yeah. need to see this. Yeah, yeah. I'm, just sweats is fine for me. This right year, now. I'm good. any relationship that can get through this year, if you've been in a close relationship, living together this year like that, it's going to be able to stand the test of time because so this is hard. Yeah, don't you find yourself like, babe, we haven't killed each other and it's been seven months. I know, it's like, wild. It's we, we we come on the edge of killing each other, though. Well, because people think Lauren and I are together all the time. We're, like Outside of this show, we run separate things, right? And this was my office and she was at her office. And so, like, we had that time where we do the show. And then I after, like absence makes the heart grow fonder, yeah. you know? We need to, like, re- Then we come together. But now yeah. everybody's all day on top of each other. Guys, be careful what you wish for because once we go back to, like, being on that treadmill again, it's going to be... We're going to probably miss each other a lot. The world needed the stillness. The world needed the reset for sure. Yes, it needed the stillness. Yeah. What is your morning routine, including with your products? If there's certain products that you reach for, like, do you have a whole setup in the morning or is it different every single day? I have like my beauty routine is pretty much the same. I only wash my hair like every two or three days. Um, So here's a little tip for everybody out there. I shampoo because I have oily roots and long hair. So I shampoo with Way Detox shampoo with the roots. And then I use like our hydrating medium uh, shampoo for the ends, like mid-length to ends. And then only do our treatment mask from mid-length to ends. And then like face-wise, I am really so boring. I use Barbara Sturm's products. I love Chantecaille and Shawnee Darden's products. Um, Dennis Gross has these really cool pads that I use at night. And that's... Yeah, kind of my routine. You're talking about the exfoliating peel pads, right? Those are the best. They're so good. You just see like a layer of dirt come off of your face. It's great. Dr. Dennis is one of the best people. He's been on the show a couple times, coming on again soon. I I love him. If not, I would look like just like an old, you know, piece of dust. Well, you got to get that face shield thing, that light thing. Oh, I got it. Oh, he has it. Me and Dr. D are like this. Dr. D did Botox on him on the show. First time. Are we calling him Dr. D? Dr. D. Yeah, we're like, you know. Dr. D. G. Yeah, he gave me Botox the first time I ever had it on this show while we were doing the show. Maybe Jen should come back and wash your hair on this show because that takes about an hour. Yeah, we just get all my stuff done on the show. Oh my God. If there's a product out of all your products that you would recommend our audience starts with, what would it be and why? Ooh, I would say, well, for your hair, our wave spray is like one of our first products we ever I like created, that a lot. and everybody loves it. No yeah, matter that's what your my hair favorite type product is. you guys have. I would say our leave-in conditioner because everyone's like hydrating from head to toe, especially this year. And then I really love our hand wash and hand lotion that just came out. It looks so chic and it smells so good, and it has like these biodegradable exfoliating beads. And it was such a passion project for the team, like during. COVID and quarantine, and it turned out so beautiful. Are you just as organized as reorganized makes it look like on her feed, or is your life not as organized? You know what's weird? My husband and I are both Pisces, and we are pretty organized. Yeah. I feel like when you have like a hectic work life, you need your home. Like we just had our house shot for AD, and it was like looking at it from like everybody else's perspective, it's so 
cream and beige and white and like nothing's going on because it just makes us feel calm. And with Rhea, we organized shout out. She is so incredible at like putting everything in its right place. And, and we've been able to keep it up, which I'm so happy about. I love the cream and nude and white vibes. Can I, can I do that with a baby? Because I feel like, is it possible? You know what? So Maison Trouvaillet did our d- interior design and he has the best tip that if you have kids, you can live that life, but you need to buy outdoor furniture to have inside. Oh, that's smart because it's all resistant to the elements. Oh my God, that is such a good tip. Yeah, yeah. that is a good we tip. We have this chihuahua that has this weird tick where every time he throws up, it has to be on the couch. And I'm not joking. This it is the weirdest tick. He's never thrown up anywhere. And it's not even but like the couch. It's not like real. It's like it's like he like spits up. It's not like actual like chunky throw. But it's it's, it's a weird like he can't throw up anywhere. It's I don't know what's happening, but it's only on the couch. We either have to have outdoor couches or we got to get rid of the dog. No, the outdoor couch is such a good tip. Well, you just wipe it up. You cannot get rid of the dog. I know I can't. Yeah. I'd love okay, you. I'll get rid of you before we get rid of the dog. <laughs> That's a good tip though. Outdoor outdoor furniture. furniture inside, and actually, there's like really chic like restoration, even West Elm. Like they have. Really chic outdoor furniture. You would never know. That's no, that's a good smart. Tip. I might steal that. I might be re- redoing some things inside. So your, is your dog there, will thank me later. Yeah, yeah. You, it's a poor dog. Is, is there like a ritual that you do in the morning at night, or is it just wake up, check my emails, go? Cause some, oh no. Like, is it a whole routine? I have a whole like thing I do in the morning. So I'm going to tell you, pre-pandemic, just like chasing the day as always. Um, I went, and this is a whole other podcast, but I went to the Hoffman Institute. Uh, like around this time last year. And so like I figured out a schedule for the first time in my life. I actually am not like on a plane twice a week and I'm home and I and I was like, I need a routine. I just Googled habit tracker, printable ha- habit tracker and started using that to just like make sure that like I'm doing my gratitude journal. I use five minute journal. I love I do um, the Hoffman Institute's meditations in the mornings um, and like even drinking water, remembering to drink water. Like I keep it all in my habit tracker and it's really, I'm 11 months in now and it's been such a game changer. So I now have, my mornings are so planned. It's actually in my phone every day. It's so, I'm so cheesy. But I do gratitude journal, take the dogs out, have coffee, meditate, shower, get ready. And then I now, instead of like being on my phone and my computer and then like all the different things at once, like so many screens, and constantly being disrupted, I now will take my phone and put it into airplane mode for 90 minute segments. And that's Smart. when I do emails and actually like get work done, Zooms, whatever I need to do, and then take a break, do another chunk of like creating content in the afternoon. But I have it all on my calendar mapped out. So now I have like a full routine. Can Even you explain bedtime. what happened? Like, so I've talked to one of my business partners went to Hoffman and had an, like, what he says was an incredible experience. It just burnt something. Didn't they burn? Didn't we lose? It just burned. Burn the yeah, but they've moved locations. So they're up and running. Can you explain that experience and like to somebody who's unfamiliar with what Hoffman is, like what it can potentially do for, for someone? Well, I'll tell you, the book would have never happened had I not gone to Hoffman. You know, I felt finally at a place where I was like, okay, I left Hoffman and I'm like, I feel like a grown up now. And I feel like I can actually like share the tips that I got there. And also, you know, from my journey being a celebrity hairstylist and a business owner and like put it all together. So the book isn't just about, you know, celebrity. It's not just about business building and mentorship and all that. It's also about like taking care of yourself and spirituality and, and all the things. So Hoffman, I will tell you, uh, going into it, it's a week. You give them your phone. You don't have your phone for a week. No hold, electricity hold on, at all, on. right? What is or Hoffman is it... for someone that doesn't know? Because I don't know what it is. Oh, my I, God. I, Katy Perry might have gone there. Is that who? Katie is that actually, where I heard about it? Yeah, Katy told me about it. Okay, I think I saw it in an interview. Yes, so what is it, though, exactly? It. Um, it's intense, right? Yeah, so it's like a, I don't want to even say retreat, because it's not like you're getting pampered. It is a, uh, oh God, it's called the Hoffman Process. And basically, it's like, it's a psychotherapy camp. So you go and you give them your phone for a week and I can't divulge too much about what you do, but I will say this, it, to sum it up, it's 10 years of therapy in one week. And I am a therapy goer. Like my husband and I both have like, that's the one thing I can tell everyone. If you're in a relationship, go to therapy because it just helps you to like bring the best out of each other. So my husband's been a Hoffman. Uh, It, it really helped me to realize the bad things I was doing in my life 
that like I was a slave to my own busy schedule and getting validation from work and not being connected to my family like I used to be just so many different things that like I couldn't really sit without my distractions and without like my busyness and the schedule and like look at myself and like think okay so some of the things I do I learned from my parents and like before I have kids I don't want to pass it on to my kids so let's figure this out and it's we've had several friends and family members and members from our team go and it's been awesome to watch everyone kind of come let out me did you go you with your husband up. really quick you cannot go with anyone that you know okay let, yeah. me, let me ask you this so like and this is kind of what I asked my partner when we were talking about it say like I know I probably have a lot of issues that I got to work through but I would say also at the same time that I'm a fucked up person that's also high functioning right like I feel like I you got know, that vibe from you yeah like first, I'm first thing yeah I'm kind of like out there but I also feel like things are going well like business is going well like I'm okay in a relationship got a child and like so I feel like I'm functioning even though I may have issues that I got to figure out going into a Hoffman I think the fear would be from someone like me. It's like, well, what if you strip away the things that make you function while you're going into like whatever trauma or anything you got to work through in your head? Or does it do that? Or is it like more like it amplifies the good things and gets rid of the bad? Like kind of just trying to understand it in that way. I'll tell you this. For that week, you are in small groups. You also have a big group that you – and it. I don't want to make it sound like it's like a rehabilitation center because it's not. But you don't talk about your – actual name no one knows your actual name and no one knows what you do for a living you're not allowed to talk about that because that is that mask that we wear of like our job oh my and God, like sounds amazing and you yeah so really and it's not about networking none of those things it really is about no like, one's an opportunist trying to like no God. no but you go in there i remember being like what am i doing here i actually have the best life like i shouldn't be complaining about anything this is crazy and i left being like Oh my God, I was so fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm scared of. But no, it feels good because they give you the tools to like recognize. To deal with it. Oh my God. Like I used to like be that person that like never. And again, like Mormonism, there was definitely a lot of perfectionist patterns for me. And I was the person that like never lost my shit. And I was like, oh, everything's totally fine. Pleasantville, you know, and then would like burst because the anxiety just hit a level. And now I feel like I'm so glad I went. I, I think, you know, this year has brought out the best and the worst. And I think it's like had us all sitting and really reflecting and, and looking at ourselves. And it is uncomfortable for sure. I will tell you that it's not easy. Like I wanted to leave twice. It's not easy. But when you go through it, you just feel like, oh, my God, I'm an adult. I actually like I was 40. And I'm like, I feel like an adult and I love my parents in a way I never have before. And it, it's just really, really amazing. So well, you kind of generally spoke about something. Is there other little things that you noticed about yourself? It could be something so little, like something so micro. Like what were like some things that you saw that have that you kind of got through that have made you come to the other side? Like you said, for instance, you wrote your book. Like what was holding you back from writing your book in the first place? It's interesting. Um, HarperCollins actually, I had my first meeting with them and they pitched the idea and I was like, I don't really have a story to tell. Like I am not, you know, Phil Knight, shoe dog. Like I, you know, I felt like, what do I know? And as I started going, so I basically after Hoffman was like, stay off your phone, be more present, be centered. Let's like really look and take time to reflect on your journey. Cause I haven't had that time, you know, even running a business, like and you guys know this as well. It's like, you never really get to celebrate the wins. Cause you're constantly thinking about new innovation, new, 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 what's going to happen in like six months, eight months. And I was just planes, trains, and automobiles, and Cannes Film Festival, Met Ball, commercials, so many things that were going on. And I have not had time to like stop and reflect on my journey. And so when I went through Blackberry photos from 2006 to present day every year, um, I'm so organized. I wrote down every job I've ever done. And like the photographer I worked with, it's so weird. And I went through that and like reflected on what I've learned from clients and just it it just flowed it just uh, all the stories and everything just came together and it was so so therapeutic what is your book about tell us why someone should buy it what value do you think people are going to get out of it um i would say the book is a coming of age story you know it's kind of like i keep joking that it's like the book of mormon on broadway <laughs> mixed with like Romy and michelle but also like a bit of um like a ryan murphy you know show i don't know it's it's Really, it's it's a guide to help you skip the line. And it's something that I wish existed when I moved to L.A. in 2000. 
You know, I, I felt like I needed all of this advice. And it's also, you know, done with like a touch of humor so it doesn't get boring. Is there something micro, like a little story you can tell us in the book that you that just you think that people just want to know more? Yeah, I'll tell you a couple, actually. Okay. Um, well, we touched on this, but I talk about being a woman, not having like any sort of degree and raising capital and having those like weird dates with like venture capitalists and private equity guys. And then I which also- is really, really fucking hard. Yeah, it's in it's intimidating and also kind of, you know, annoying because a lot of times I was spoken to in a condescending way. And I remember just being like, okay, just grin and bear it. Um, I tell a story about when I was young. Um, I so Mormons give up ten percent of their income every year for tithing. So that goes to help the less fortunate and the church. And I didn't realize once I got baptized that my parents have, they do like a family meeting with your bishop at the end of the year and talk about how much each family member has given for the year. I had been giving empty envelopes, <laughs> saving my money to buy like Hello Kitty erasers and probably John Stamos like t-shirts or whatever. <laughs> and my parents found out and that was like, you know, that's when they were like, okay, we got to figure this out. Um, another fun tidbit, I, I go into the Dave Matthews band story and you guys, it's, I can't make this up and I hope he doesn't take a restraining order out. But the reason I moved from LA to, or sorry, from St. George, Utah to LA was because of Dave Matthews. I got to meet him on a movie set and he was like playing guitar for my friends and I. And and he was like, like, what do you guys want to be? And she's like, I want to work in fashion. I'm like, I want to work in beauty. And he's like, you totally should. And it was like, I, I was like, what? Yes, he's right. Dave Matthews gave me the courage to follow my dreams. And that is why I'm here today. Dave Matthews, Crash Into Me. Remember that song? That is the best like, song when you're just vibing in the car. Oh, yeah. Like in high school when I got my like brand new like like Ford Explorer and like driving. <laughs> <laughs> so sexy. Ford Explorer, <laughs> Crash Into Me, the, Dave Matthews her, her band. Her license plate said, uh, <laughs> Daddy bought it, I got it. <laughs> no. Yes, it was horrible. Did oh. you really? <laughs> projectile <laughs> and I was Daddy. dating this girl at the time and uh, she pulled up and like with this weird being bad we're married now so I feel like the girl's forgiving me she's married now with kids but um uh and like her car that said it said love for lore on the license plate and then the, the bracket said daddy got it I bought it and it was parked right in front and gave us a fully away yeah I, I think that she was pretty mad oh my god was it was a very house. distinctive <laughs> Ford Explorer <laughs> it was a very with a heart crystal like hanging in the oh, mirror oh that by the way was enough for me to I would lose my shit if I was like girl a heart crystal it's horrible oh. oh it was pink it was it, it was on brand that's so um, funny okay so if you were giving advice to our audience, as Michael said, there's a lot of millennials and they're just starting out. And obviously with the pandemic, there's a lot happening. What advice? What are a couple of tips that you would say? I would say try not to lose your momentum and to not lose sight of your goals. Like we might have had a hiccup. There's been a pause. I think this year has not been about making money, but it's been about, like, like I said, again, like self-reflection and, and really connecting. I think having an emotional connection with people in your life um, because we can't hug and see each other. It's like, it, it's been hard. Um, but I would say this, this is kind of another reason why I wanted to write the book is in high school, we don't really learn about finances and about like how to invest. We don't really learn about like what stocks are or you know, how to budget your life. And I remember being in a lot of credit card debt when I moved here because my family, literally, I, I, I know it sounds so cliche, but like I had $300 when I came here. So it's like I was living off of credit cards. There's a whole story about that, how to get out of that credit card debt. And if you're not great at handling your own money, hire someone that is. So like that's my biggest tip is is hire a bookkeeper. If it's a friend that you can pay, whoever it is, like I remember getting audited for like $45,000 and I was probably 26 at the time because hairstylists are income fluctuates so much. And I remember being like, holy shit, what am I going to do? Like, I don't have this money. That's the year that I hired my business manager. And, and you know, I, I would just say like, don't try to be good at all the things if you're not, you know, like outsource and get creative. It's a real disservice that they don't teach kids more about finances because even for me like and I've always been kind of more of a numbers guy but like it wasn't until the last like three or four years that I started getting a real handle on it and like understanding tell her the book you read that changed well I do think that every I mean it sounds cheesy but 
No, that, no well, that's, but a, that's a that's a great one. book. But I think honestly, for like an in depth but also understandable and digestible explanation around money and index funds and savings and stocks and like how you set up like you know even how you set up your four hundred one ks and like all the little things or how you participate in a company four hundred one k. Tony Robbins' book Money Master the Game is long, but it's really really good. And I think young people should, like I think it should be taught because what he did is he spent few years going and interviewing like all the top money managers around the country and basically just making it digestible so young people could understand how to take care of their finances. Today's podcast is brought to you by Tony Robbins. Yeah, it's Tony a good, Robbins. You know, like, and Hoffman. It's <laughs> out of all the things he's done, like that's the thing that I point to the most because it is really digestible and it gives an understanding. You're just not taught this in school. That's so smart, honestly. Like, I, I remember my dad would like sit me down and give me like fake contracts to sign for like my car and insurance just so I kind of got into the rhythm. That's but smart. but really though, I, I feel like I just did not, I was not prepared for like building a, a life and then, you know, having money to invest in business. And it really is, that is really smart to, to read. I love Tony Robbins. And he's great. I mean, and I think even in line with rich dad, poor dad, like in paying yourself first. I think that's a concept people don't get. And like when you say paying yourself, like putting that money aside to save, to invest in the business or future before you even pay your taxes or take on expenses or your rent, like you got to set something aside. I think it's a hard concept for people to grasp. Totally. I mean, I joked with my business manager early on because I was like, I'm essentially paying you a part of my income to do what like my parents did in high school, like give me an allowance, (laughs) teach me about like savings. And it really is funny because I remember the first year with them, I'd like sneak my credit card to buy things because like I needed to be flossy and feel validated by wearing like cool things that I couldn't afford. And I remember my business manager was like, you do know like you're stealing from yourself. I was like, yeah, OK, I'm going to stop doing that. But don't you feel like for I might young, need a business manager. Jeez. <laughs> for everybody, though, especially young, I think especially this year, everybody's so anxious about their finances. Because like you said, it's been a really difficult year to make ends meet and make money. A lot of people are hurting. But don't you feel like once you understood finance a little bit more that it became much less scary? Like once you understood money, like, because I think people don't understand and don't know. So they're overwhelmed and shocked and scared about what's going on with their finances. But if you just understood it and take the time to learn about it, it becomes much less scary. I mean, guys, it really is true that like money can be the root of all evil. It can like, you can get obsessed with it. It can take over your life when you have a lot of it. It's, It's an issue. And I think like not having it, but also like standing in your own way is a problem. And my shout out to Melissa Morton at Gelfand, that's my business manager of probably 13 years now. She has a whole part in a chapter where she gave her tips for people that are just starting out. I need to read that part. What's your favorite Kardashian? <laughs> <laughs> I can't answer it, Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say Chris. Oh, for sure. Come on. You know what? There would be no Chloe without Chris. It, it, what I like about the Kardashians, Scotty has been on this podcast twice. And this is what I like about them. <laughs> oh my God. They made glam its own, like, I don't want to say entity, but like they, they like branded glam and they started bringing them in front of the camera. And I feel like a lot of people have tried to make it seem like they effortlessly look like this. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like the Kardashians normalized it. Oh, for sure. Listen, I lived it. I My life has been changed because of it. I posted about this on stories the other day because it really is true. Like I... I get sad when people don't give credit to their glam squad because they really do work hard. And yes, they get paid, but also it's just like we live in a world now where Instagram is changing lives. And like you tagging that person, I can say first and foremost, like my life was changed because of that small bit of, you know, um, of, of shine and gratitude that they would give us. And it really is so important, I think, to support artist. I agree. I think it's so cool too. Like so many people are blowing up. It's so cool to see all, like you said, you never know what can happen when you tag someone. So tag your glam squad. Yeah. Yeah. Tag tag a glam squad today. Tag a glam squad today. <laughs> Even if you don't work with them, tag them. Where can everyone find you? Where can everyone find your book? Where can they buy it? Pimp yourself out. Tell us your websites, everything. Oh my God. Okay. So if you want to learn more about me, you can follow me at Jen Atkin Hair on Instagram, Twitter, all the things. Um, The book, you can go to HarperCollins. I have a whole link for all the places you can get it worldwide. Um, It's called a landing page. And it's sold wherever books are sold. Like, uh, please support independent bookstores this year. They need it so much. Um, But you can find us like Barnes & Noble, Target, Amazon. Um, Blowing My Way to the Top is the title. And then I also have 
at the way is uh, the lifestyle brand beauty brand and at main addicts is another company that i have that is helping to support hairstylists and working kind of a younger audience and we have younger stylists that work um with us that are doing really cool like how to's and content and stuff so main addicts is more content driven and way is obviously the product yeah and then for your instagram what can we expect there like what's the what are your stories what what's your vibe what's your brand you know i kind of cleaned things up like three months ago i was like i'm just really i felt a little scattered so i was like i need to like be a little bit more elevated and elevate my content so you will see what you want to see because I asked people what they want to see on my page. It's going to be tutorials on reels. I've been having so much fun with that. I love kind of showing just my everyday on stories. And then the grid is it's going to get it's going to get a little flossy here and there, but also educational. You know what I think would crush it for you? This is just like a my own like thinking. Did you see the Instagram just released guides? Have you seen that? It's oh, new. I we fully have like 12 of them made already. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Overachiever. Yeah. I feel like that's going to crush I don't even you. have the yeah. feature. Yeah, you got to get it. Well, for what you do, I was just thinking like there's so many <sighs> guides you can create. More that, like, content though. Yeah. I know. But you know, <sighs> guides, I'm so, because I love to organize things. Guides for you me. You love a good guide, huh? I like have holiday guides. I even have like a charity tab I posted yesterday so you can give the gift of giving to someone that needs it. And how do you do that on your stories? It's a. It's in my guides. It's, it's guide. in your guides. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna show you. Okay. I'm gonna look at your guides. I'm subliminally telling you to get on the guides. I have been wanting you to come on the podcast for so long. I'm so happy that you finally got to come on. Come back anytime. Um, blowing my way to the top. How to break the rules. Find your purpose and create the life and career you deserve. Thank you so much for coming on. And thank you, Harper Collins, for letting me call it that. Yeah, Harper it's Collins. It's a great title. It's, it's a, a great title. It's a great. It's title. a conversation piece. Yeah. I love it. Thank, Thank you, you guys coming. for having me. Thank you. This is so fun.